Hey internet, Howie here, back with another Jiu Jit Fit video. And on today's video, I have a full all along workout comprised of totally compound exercises. Now if you don't know what a compound exercise is, it is an exercise that uses more than one muscle group. Um, uh, an example of this would be a squat, which is something we're going to be doing, deadlifting again, something we're going to be doing, um, as opposed to an isolation movement, something like a bicep curl, which is a predominantly isolation movement, we're not going to be doing that. Everything we're going to be doing is going to be using lots of different muscle groups. The purpose of that is the more muscle groups you, you use, the more energy you burn, and the, either the, the more we're going to work those muscles in, in terms of muscle definition and strength, but also in terms of you know burning those calories for um, body recomposition or fat burning. So, the six exercises that I have for you today are the single arm dumbbell snatch, the renegade row, uh, threading the needle, I have um, push-ups, can't really do a compound movement without push-ups if you ask me, um, we've also got a goblet squat and dumbbell um, deadlift. Now this is just because I only have dumbbells at home and I know a lot of other people have the same now I have two different weights of dumbbells, but if you only have one set that are adjustable, you can do most of these by just setting up two different weighted dumbbells. The Renegade Row um, would be a little bit different, but that's not a problem. You can still use the, still do it in the same way. Uh, it just puts a little bit out of balance, but not necessarily too much of an issue at this point. Um, so without further ado, Let's uh, break down the exercises and then move on and follow along. I hope you enjoy it. I'll see you on the other side. And up first, we have the single arm dumbbell snatch. So this is a little bit like a squat and a little bit like a single arm overhead press at the same time. It's a little bit like the push press that we've done on the other video, but with one heavier weight. And this is a big, big compound movement, working those legs back core, obliques, shoulders, and predominantly a shoulder exercise, but you're working so much more, working those legs, pushing through to get that weight up. This is better to do with a heavier weight for that reason, to get the most out of the exercise and maintain that spinal alignment, keeping that posture as good as we can, keeping that butt nice and straight really snatching that dumbbell up into the air. And the next movement we have is the Renegade Row. This is a bit like a plank with a row movement involved. So you're going to start with two dumbbells on the floor, about shoulder width apart. You want to get yourself into a nice kind of plank slash push up position. And then you'll see here, I have my legs nice and wide. And this is because of the instability gained from trying to row these nice heavy weights. Now my back is as straight as possible. There is a little bit of flexion there in the hips. That's just to maintain this alignment and make sure that I can actually row with this weight and hold that core nice and tight too. Sometimes it is acceptable to uh, give up a little bit of posture to gain that extra strength for using a heavier weight. Now you'll see here I'm using a lighter weight and you can see my posture is a lot better there that keeping that straight line from heel all the way to shoulders. And next we have a core exercise, it's called threading the needle, or thread the needle. Um, some people might be familiar with a similar exercise, I believe it's done in yoga. So this is going to be starting in a side plank position with a lighter dumbbell in the hand. And we're going to take it 
all the way through, having that little bit of rotation in the hips and the shoulder. And extending the arm all the way up at the top, maintaining that straight line again from heel to shoulder in that other plane. And you'll see there's a slight raise, it's probably because my foot, as you can see here, is in front of the other, meaning that I have a slight amount of forward rotation on that hip. This is my issue. helpful to have that foot in front just to maintain a little bit of stability as you can see here I'm trying to really rotate through threading the needle. Next is push-ups and you've got a few options here um, the ones I'm showing you are more traditional variations of the standard push-up as you'll see keeping those elbows as tucked as possible trying to get my chest down to the floor and an easier alternative as you can see here is just lowering those knees to the ground reducing the weight that you have to push up you can also do as I will be a diamond here one of my favorites really good for chest activation um, but there are other alternatives as well like the wall press um, if you've seen my other video moving on we have goblet squat so this is a squat but this time you're going to be holding a weight in what's called a goblet hold just like you're holding a goblet funnily enough and really sinking down into those hips so this is a forward weighted squat or front loaded if you prefer, prefer that terminology as you can see I'm trying to sink down into my hips as much as possible and try and have my arms at what I'd call rest and the final exercise you can't do a compound um, video without this really, it's the dumbbell deadlift, especially if you're using dumbbells. And so you're going to have your feet nice hip width apart, I want you to put the dumbbells over the top, and as you lower down, I want you to keep those knees back as it were, stop them going over your toes, keep your shins 90 degrees to the floor, stick that bum out, keep that back nice and straight. Feel this all the way through. I really what I like to say through the, the back of the body and the kind of shoulders all the way down to the heels. You should feel this pretty much everywhere. Deadlifts are a fantastic exercise, really fantastic compound movement. So let's move straight on and into the warm up. We're going to start with straight away is hip rotations a bit of freestyle both ways just getting, getting them moving and warmed up the blood flowing into all the muscles this is the point of the warm up we're just going to do a nice bit of dynamic stretching a little bit um, <clears throat> of a light cardio 30 seconds moving on we're going to do some leg swings listen to the beeps they'll tell you when to move on And then we're going to move on to the leg. Really warming up those hip flexes in a nice dynamic way. And after this, we're going to move on to the torso twist. So those elbows, twisting that torso, warming up the core of the back, the spine, just getting all those muscles in the torso lightly warmed up. After this, we're going to move on with what I've done here is some high knees, just getting that heart rate elevated. We want to make sure we're nice and warm. Now, if you find after this first warm up, this isn't you're not quite warm enough, we don't feel limber enough, an extra set of these uh, high knees or star jumps or something for 30 seconds should suffice. And just do them as long as you need to, just to make sure you're nice and warm. bring this to a close. The next exercise we're going to do is we're going to point the toes to the floor and pull them up. As you can see fairly quickly this is going to stretch the muscles of the calves and up into the groin. It's important to stretch up the calves for doing squats 
sometimes tight calves can be one of the reasons why you can't squat so deep. Cross the arms over, it's going to help warm up the chest and shoulders and scapula. And then we'll move on, keeping those feet at shoulder width. We'll move on and we're going to go down and try and touch the toes. Now it really doesn't matter how far we go down, it's all about that, that, that dynamic stretch. So feel that down the back of the legs as we're doing this. And then we're just going to swing the arms both ways. Nice big shoulder rotations, really. But seeing as the first exercise we will be doing is that single arm dumbbell snatch. Just make sure those shoulders are nice and limber. And also, that's the reason why I've done a little bit more on the legs than perhaps upper body at this point. And so, now we're limber and warmed up. Let's get into the main body, the meat and potatoes of today's exercise so starting with that single arm dumbbell snatch listen for the beeps they will tell you when to move on and so we will be doing as I stated earlier if it's a one-sided exercise we'll be doing 20 seconds or 10 reps whichever comes first so if you hit, you hit the 10 reps you can wait for the rest of the time. There is 10 seconds rest in between each set, just, just to um, make sure that you are prepared and we can get all the equipment into place or change hands. Really driving that dumbbell up into the sky. It's almost as, as if it's a, like a reverse deadlift. And so now we move on to the renegade row. Get yourself ready, position. Hold that plank position, feel nice and sturdy, feel comfortable and ready. And then we're going to row. Like I said, each of these single sided exercises will be 20 seconds. And when we move on to things like push ups or the goblet squat, we will be doing 40 or 20 reps or more if you prefer, if you like you're more than welcome to do as many reps as you can in the time or you're welcome in the time to do whatever reps are comfortable and use the extra time as a rest period so moving on to that second side really row trying to get that elbow behind the back as much as possible try and keep the spine nice and straight as I said in the uh, explanation sometimes it's okay to uh, lose a bit of posture or technique just to gain those extra extra gains if you like get that extra weight so we're now going to move on and thread the needle so I'm going to use a lighter weight here getting into that side plank position and get ready on that elbow that's it, really trying to turn in and twist that torso. Really want to work the oblique, the obliques and the core with this one. It may look like I'm slightly curved, but again, this having that foot in front just help that find helps keep me stable enough to uh, to get that rotation without losing my balance. You are welcome, of course, to have your feet on top of each other if you prefer that. Really trying to thread that needle. And now, getting ourselves ready. I see them outside. I'm going to grab a towel, make sure that. My chest, which is probably going to get sweaty, isn't going to get covered in all the dust and dirt from the floor. And I'm going to do some diamond push-ups. 
here I will be doing 20, you are welcome to keep going until it beeps, or you just do as many as you can in the allotted time, which of course now is 40 seconds. Obviously, please do the variation of the push-up that you are most comfortable doing. Again, that could be the wall press. If you've seen my first video, you'll know about this. Um, so you can do it from your knees as well. <clears throat> See, I, will, I only did 20 reps here, taking the rest as extra time. Moving on to the goblet squat. Really sinking into those hips, going as low as we can. Really work those legs. Again, as I've mentioned with every time I talk about leg exercises, you want to maintain that posture, oh sorry, that alignment between the toes, the knees and the hips want to be using as the most range of motion possible for doing this exercise. So sink down as much as physically possible. And then the last exercise that we're going to do is of course the dumbbell deadlift. Get yourself in position. You want those the bar of the dumbbell over the toes in as close as possible you're just going to pull them up try and keep that posture try and keep that spine in line as, as much as possible if there's a little bit of curvature and the thing we want to do here is really stick the bum out as you can see there i corrected my posture there it feels a bit too much of a strain you don't have to go down quite as far you don't have to bring them straight to the floor really stick that bum out and try and reduce the curvature in that spine. If you've seen my other videos, you will also see that there's good mornings, which is essentially the same exercise. I even talk about it being basically the, early, the easiest variation of the deadlift. And that is the first round completed. So feel free to pause the video here and get yourself prepared for round two. Take a minute or two's rest if you need it. And when you're ready, let's jump straight back into it. Starting again with that single arm dumbbell snatch. Really drive that up into the sky. Really do love this exercise. I think for an upper body or mostly upper body movement, this really does work the obliques. Trying to stop that twist up and down as it were lowering of the shoulder trying to keep that core nice and tight trying to keep yourself upright bleaks are incredibly important again if you watch my martial arts video you'll hear me talk about how they're really important for that kinetic chain for punching keep this going as many as we can in, that, in those 20 seconds rest, take those few seconds, get yourself prepared, time for the renegade row. Now when we do this, let's make sure you're using a weight that you feel comfortable with. I'm comfortable with this weight, or even though I am aware that my form has been slightly diminished because of the weight, but as long as you're aware of this, this is, uh, this is fine, as sometimes it is acceptable, as I've said throughout this video, to lose form for the purposes of strength. Not all the time, of course, but just some of the time that is acceptable and that is what's happening here. So, let's get ourselves ready, Put those, move those out of the way, find your lighter dumbbell if that's what you're using, I mean, you're more than welcome to use the same dumbbell set of dumbbells for this, 
Grab that lighter dumbbell, get yourself into that side plank position, and let's get ready to thread the needle. I almost seem to panic as that timer comes on, as I'm not quite in position, but I sometimes find that that helps. Sometimes those, uh, those little stresses can make a big difference. Really try and push that dumbbell through that gap that you're making, through the eye of the needle, as it were. Really try and get that torso to rotate. Again, another one that's going to work the obliques, work in the shoulders as well, the rotator cuff. to do those push-ups. You've heard me mention wall press and you've got them on your knees. You can also do, if you are what I like to call an incline push-up. So you could do this on a work surface or a table. Just keeping that diagonal, reducing the amount of weight that you have to push. You could, for example, use the wall or some point on that wall there slightly lower than where I would do the wall press against a flat wall. Really trying to get that chest as close to the floor or the surface that you're pressing up against to get the full range of motion. And yes, I have just reused the footage this time. My second shots weren't as good, so I thought I'd just keep with the one that worked. So that goblet squat. Sinking in. Really feel that burn. Love-hate relationship with squats and legs. I love to feel the burn, but I hate it while it's happening. I'm sure a lot of people are the same. see me there just a second ago me trying to just check that alignment with my my right foot and have a little bit of hip instability due to having flat feet just do the best you can get that other dumbbell and let's get ready to do those dumbbell deadlifts now I've only put in two rounds I will put in a link in the description so you can start either from the beginning of the first round or the second round, depending on how many rounds you feel you want to do. I would recommend doing at least two. That's why I put two in. Should only take maybe 15 minutes, maybe a little bit more with the warm up and cool down. The last few reps in in the last few seconds. Really push yourself. And you're done. And that is the second round complete. So now let's move on to the cool down. Now I haven't timed this one. I'm only doing a few stretches. Um, first thing I want you to do is you want you to sit, sit down one leg at 90 degrees and you're going to reach for those toes really pulling back on those toes trying to also get that head to the knee again ideally these things have normally held for at least about 11 seconds but if you feel you need to stretch for a bit longer go ahead and stretch for a bit longer so you want to do both sides reaching for that knee trying to get that head to the knee really feeling that stretch both legs together Reaching again for the toes of the ball of the foot and pulling through. Flexibility is one of the key components of strength. So we want to make sure 
we are flexible. So now we're going to work those hip flexors, pushing in through those hips, bending that knee, and the other bending both knees if you like, and pushing forward, driving through those hips. Swapping that around. Again, feeling that stretch within your hips, really driving and driving that forward. Next, so one of my favourite stretches, hand nice and high, foot no more than a foot from the wall, 30 centimetres, and you can really turn and look over the opposite shoulder. Again, really fantastic stretch. Fingers all the way through the spine, neck. Just love it. And now, into like those fingers, pushing in front of you, head down. And we're going to basically do the reverse. Into like those fat hands behind your back, and you're going to push down and backwards. And you should be able to really feel this kind of front of the shoulders and the chest. And that is everything. So, I really hope those of you that followed along really enjoyed that. Um, obviously compound movements are fantastic for this body recomposition and for that um, dynamic chain that I've talked about before, trying to get those muscles to work uh, synchronized, work them, make, make them work together. Uh, I will leave a link in the description below or a couple of links so you can um, rewind back exactly to the point where the, um, the exercise starts so you can do as many circuits as you like and you know feel free to go nuts, do as many as you, you feel you can do. Um, and yeah, if you hadn't noticed, I have tried to give myself a bit of a quarantine trim. Leave a uh, a like or a comment if you if you like my hair, I guess, and if you like the video, um, you know, please like, share, subscribe, um, and tell me what other kind of content you'd really like to see, and you know, let's see if we can get that done. Um, I really hope you enjoyed this again, and you know, stay strong, stay safe, and until next time.